Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. This is the Fosse Audio ZD3, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Fosse Audio for providing the ZD3 for review. To greatly appreciate it, Fosse Audio, you rock. All right, so the Fosse Audio ZD3, this will set you back $180 from your bank account. It is a DAC preamp. And if you're familiar with Fosse Audio products, this is going to remind you very much of the looks of the Z line. Other than the missing vents here on the side, it looks very similar to that. You have the burnt orange copper volume knob and those rounded edges, aluminum, and then you have that little heat sink here on the bottom. Overall, it's just a very nice looking, attractive device that isn't gonna draw all the attention to just be about the looks, but it's also gonna focus on the performance and the sound. So Fosse Audio has provided the ZD3 with quite a bit of internals that are unique. And it has the Exmos XU316, the Sabre ESS 9039Q2M. It also has a Texas Instruments LME 49720 op amp, but you can swap those. And Fosse Audio did provide me with an alternate op amp. That was the JRC 4580D. And I did swap the op amp. Normally, I do not swap op amps um, in devices, but since Fosse Audio provided both op amps to try, I did include that into the review process. Normally, I would just keep it as stock, but since Fosse Audio included the alternate one to try, I did that. Normally, I will just review it as is and will not use alternate uh, op amps for a review and give impressions, but this time is different because they provided them. So the Fosse Audio ZD3 is capable of doing up to 32-bit 768 DSD-12 and using uh, optical or coax, you can get 24192. Using Bluetooth 5.0, you can get 2448. It does have um, both balanced and RCA Outputs on XLR, it can do 5 VRMS, and on RCA, it does 2.5 VRMS. That is fixed or variable. You control that with this little switch here on the bottom where it says off or bypass. Off is variable, bypass is fixed. And you have various inputs of USB, HDMI, ARC, coax, optical, Bluetooth 5.0, which is supporting of Aptex, Aptex HD, AAC, and SBC. SNR is 126 dB, Synad is uh, 12 dB, and Dynamic Range is 123 dB. It does include a power supply, which is 12 volt, one and a half amp, which is right here. One thing of note has kind of a short cable. It's about two, probably about two and a half feet long. Very small power brick, but it is a short cable. So you may need something longer depending on your positioning. And it also has trigger in and out. They include a little 3.5 for that. And it comes with a remote control. The ZD3 also is compatible with Windows, anything from seven and up and you may need to install some drivers. Um, it also uses Mac OS and Linux capabilities. The remote control, which was mentioned, is slim and long. It has a lot of buttons on it that do various things. I'm not gonna explain it all. It's pretty self-explanatory. Main thing is you can raise and lower the volume. You can mute it. Um, and it does the abilities to change your modes when you, in your inputs. And you can turn the display on or off, but unfortunately you do not have an option to dim it in different settings or to change the coloring. And that's kind of a bummer. You can also change all those menus by using the multifunction volume knob, which is a, a nice thing. And it sounds very nice when it spins. Fosse Audio did provide an alternate volume knob, 
you could if, if you purchase this on pre-sale you could have the option of receiving that I don't know if they're still available or not but they're very easy to replace you just pull it off and put the new one on over here you have a very very teeny tiny screen it's going it's very hard to see on camera so I'm not going to show it but when it lights up you can see what input you're using and what your bit rate is and where your volume is set and whether or not it's um, fixed or variable when you move it your volume and number will change on the back side you have all your inputs you have your Bluetooth and you have your power supply, USB, coax, and optical, and HDMI. There's your trigger up here. And then you have your two outputs, your RCA and XLR output. And as mentioned, your fixed and variable switches down here on the bottom, which is kind of a frustration if you do it on the fly or change it quite a bit. But I actually used it on variable most I didn't notice the difference between the two, but I really did like the feature of being able to use a variable, so I just kept it on that. Overall, very well built, built just like all other Fosse products, all made of aluminum. Nice and lightweight, does have just enough heft to, to stay put on the desk, and it's pretty small. As you can see, it almost fits in one hand. It's about a hand and a half for me. It's not very tall. It will not take up much space on the desk and it stacks with other Fosse Audio Zs if you have some others in the family. Op amps. So I did use the other alternate op amps, the JRC and LME, and they're fairly easy to change. You just do a couple screws and unplug the board and slide it out. And uh, just be careful that you don't bend any of the little connectors on your op amps and it goes in it'll probably take you a couple of moments two or three minutes at most if you're proficient at changing op amps if you're a noob like i am it might take you a few moments until you get comfortable again just be careful that you do not bend them on the fossey audio website there are other options available for op amps uh, some muse and some sparkos and things i can't remember all the different model numbers but i do uh, recommend that you go over there to the website and check and see if you have op amps that are available and you can swap out if you're interested in getting a zd3 later on when we talk about the uh, sound presentation i will give differences between the lme and the jrc but overall i find that Fosse Audio did a good job of the build and the layout. Uh, the buttons and all the outputs and con connections are nicely laid out. Nothing is jammed in there and cramped. And I found that it just um, fits overall. A couple things of note, I did not test it with HDMI. I did not test it with trigger. And um, I did most of the testing with the USB and Bluetooth connection. I found that the Bluetooth connection was very quick uh, and fast and stayed connected as long as you were within pro close proximity. Uh, it did tend to have some connection issues when you walked out of the room. When I went wa walking down the hallway, even though I was still within about 30 feet, it kind of stuttered and skipped slightly. Could have been maybe the walls or maybe there was other interferences. But either way, if, as long as I was in this room and in close vicinity of my desk, Bluetooth worked just fine. I had no other issues uh, with any of the outputs or connections of, or anything of the sort that I tested. The As mentioned, the power supply is rather small with a short cable. So you really can't move it around a whole lot on the desk I found using this power supply. So you may wanna use something a little bit longer if you have one. Um, I did not test anything more than the stock one. How does the Fosse Audio ZD3 sound? 
So the Fossey Audio ZD3, when I first got it, I got it sent to me from Fossey Audio in regards to a pre-sale that they were doing. And uh, I plugged it in and I did a very quick impressions video. And it was pretty much only an hour or two probably after listening. I don't remember exactly how long it was that I did that impression. And the initial impression was, this thing's good. I, yeah. Oh, and it's not bad for the price tag that they're asking. But I hadn't tested any of the real features um, and any of the other op amps. So as I started listening and really running it through its paces, I did about three weeks using the LME 49720 chip op amp chip and i listened i listened i was rather impressed i thought it had an, a, a slight warmth with some nice uh, details very good resolution and overall an, a nice natural presentation but it was a little bit on the rounded side and a little bit on just a a more lush and uh, endearing type of presentation you never i never got like fatigued of it and I never got bored of it. I always was impressed by how it sounded. But yeah, at the same time, it wasn't quite grabbing me. And I was in, using it on all sorts of DACs uh, or all, all sorts of amplifiers and using it with speakers and headphones and IEMs. I tried it on tubes and I tried it on solid state amps. And I never was like bored of the sound, but I was never really wowed by it. I was just impressed. It was just like, this is good. But nothing really like connected, like really like caught my attention. And then I was like, hey, they sent this other uh, op amp, this, this JRC 4580D. I've never heard of JRC op amps, but why not give it a try? And then I was like, oh wait, I have never changed op amps. And so I went on the Fosse Audio website, did some searching, found out that they have a video that explains how to do it and, you know, how easy it was to do. And so I followed the simple instructions on the video and very gingerly and carefully replaced the op amps, put the whole thing back together, plugged it in, reattached everything, and I, I did about three weeks worth of listening with just the JRCs. And I listened, and I listened. And the first thing that stood out was that it wasn't as warm, and that it was more neutral leaning, and it was a little bit more analytical. And all of a sudden, there was this connection for me. Things sounded to be a little bit more tight, a little bit more refined, a little bit more defined. It had a little bit more air, a little bit more space, and overall just seemed to connect with me and say, this is reproducing in a neutral but natural and accurate way. And it, it lost a little bit of that lushness and the, the enduring type of presentation. And I didn't feel quite as cozy, but yeah, I felt like I was on edge. I, I was on the... I was getting the crispness and the edginess and the bites and every little detail and, and all the the accuracy of the music that I enjoy. And it wasn't softening it and making it so that I could just go, ha. Ah. It was more like, here it is. Have fun analyzing it. Have fun nitpicking it and doing what you do. And so the for me, the JRC brought that connection. And then I went back and forth. I, I would spend several hours listening with the JRC and then several hours listening with the LME. And I, I'd listen to the same tracks. Sometimes I'd listen through an album, jump around, and then go back through and listen to the same things over again or listen to different things. And I was hearing subtle differences between both of the op amps. And I really was impressed at how the ZD3, no matter what amplifier I was using, whether it was the MyTech THX AAA HPA 
or the X-Duo TA26S or the other amplifiers that I have, Tor Audio Roger and, and various other ones that the, the Giselli uh, Arish 3 Pro, I'm try, trying to remember all the amps that I use, how that every time I change op amps, there was little differences. But the one significant difference I always changed was how it opened things up with the JRC and it became more neutral and analytical. Whereas with the LME, it was a little bit warmer, a little bit more lush, a little bit more enduring, a little bit more cozy sounding. And so if you are someone who likes to change op amps and hear differences, the ZD3 really does a good job of presenting those differences. And yet also, if you're looking for a DAC that is somewhat warm and also neutral at the same time, without being too direct and being too distinct, then you could use it in stock form. I found that both of the presentations I truly did enjoy. And one was very much an all around type of listen. And that was with the LME. And then the more analytical nitpicking, a neutral, not quite as warm, but a little bit more airy and space sounding was the JRC. And that was the one that I preferred as it brought out the abilities of the Sabre a little bit more in my opinion. Whereas the LME kind of softened those little edges it rounded things so that it wasn't quite as direct and crispy and edgy and bitey. So the ZD3. Yep. $180. It does a really good job as a DAC and also as a preamp. I found that if I connected it to anything, whether I used it variable or fixed, I didn't have any distortions. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. I could max out the ZD3 and then use the other amps as um you know the volume controls or i could do it vice versa and i had no issues whatsoever with the zd3 uh, causing problems in the chain and i used it with speakers the martin logan uh, motion 15s going in you know along with the elite cattle or see the elite audio cattle pro as the speaker amp worked just fine i also used it um, with the V3 monos and it sounded fantastic. In fact, it paired very well with the V3 monos and I used the volume knob uh, as my volume control and I truly enjoy that. In fact, once this video is over, that's how it's going to get connected again. So the Fossey Audio ZD3. It's good with the stock op amp, the LME 49720, but I really do enjoy it with the JRC 4580D. Highly recommend the Fossey Audio ZD3 as you can swap op amps and it works as a DAC and a preamp and it has all sorts of inputs and it comes in this nice little package. It's been Dave, the Honest Audio File. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video. Speak of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, and notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video and check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact channel, follow channel, support channel, all that kind of stuff is listed down below. Speaking of supporting channel, I want to thank my supporters through Patreon, YouTube memberships, and also one-time gifts. Thank you very much for all that you give to the channel. It's much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting channel, there's various ways that you can do it. One-time gifts, PayPal, Venmo, and also YouTube. And also monthly subscriptions, Patreon, and YouTube memberships. There's all sorts of things that uh, you can get, like early access to videos. And also you can uh, get other benefits that change randomly. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out the links down below. Also, my Discord server is open to the public. So if you're interested in joining a Discord server that is very polite and very friendly and kind, and uh, this is very lackadaisical. 
go ahead and join my Discord server. There's a link down below for an invite. And then there's all kinds of other information regarding gear recommendations, music recommendations, and all kinds of things listed down below. So don't forget to check the links down below. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.